Good morning. Oh. Good afternoon. Yes, that's much better. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. It's been a busy day, so I hope you're ready for something very special. We have our deacon ordination service now. So let's get our time together started with a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly divine God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the service that we had this morning, worshiping you. We ask that your presence be felt now as we come together for Kenny and Jake. We ask your guidance on them as they begin this journey as a deacon here at Williams. Help them as they minister to these precious families. Be with us during this time. In your name we pray. Amen. take my life and let it be. Let's do the first and second verses. First and second verses. open up into your bulletins and look on the side that says service, we will do a read aloud together. Come all that are blessed. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. I was hungry. And you gave me food. I was thirsty. And you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you welcomed me. I was sick. And you took care of me. Lord, when, I, when, when was it that we saw you hungry? Thirsty, stranger, or sick. The king will answer, just, just as you did it to one of these, these you, you did it to me. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do, not, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the places of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greedy with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. You will take your hymnal and turn to 247, Spirit of the Living God, 247.
Well, this afternoon we come for a very special reason and for a very important time in the life of our church and the lives of Kenny and Jake. And, and I know I echo their appreciation for your presence here in what I think is not only an intentionally intimate service, but an intentionally personal service as they are ordained tonight to the role of deacon here in our congregation. When I uh, first sat on an ordination council, it was for a friend of mine who was being ordained for the ministry. And the question came up around the table among the different ministers and other ordained folks who were there. What's the difference between being ordained as a minister and being ordained as a deacon? Somebody who thought they were being smart said to pay. Uh, but a, a very wise friend of mine said, well, the difference is while God calls both deacons and ministers, there is a double calling on the life of a deacon, and that is the calling of the church, the calling of the church, their church, to which they serve. And so, Kenny and Jake, tonight I hope you hear that not as a burden, but as a, an honor and a duty to be called not only by God to serve as deacons, but by this church to serve as well. This afternoon, I want to read a passage of Scripture and then make a few comments, and then we will uh, make our way to what I think is the most important part of this service, and that is the laying on of hands. But I want us to hear uh, tonight from of Jesus' words from Matthew chapter 25. Familiar words, I hope, uh, but words that I think apply not only in this time, but in the time of any uh, recognition of service for Christ's church. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd, se shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. On occasions like this one, one often hears the words written by the Apostle Paul in his first letter to Timothy, in which Paul explains the roles of the church to a new pastor at Ephesus, the characteristics of worthy men and women to serve in the leadership roles like elder and deacon in the church. And that particular text begins in chapter 3, in verse 8, with the words, Deacons likewise must be serious. And then there's a long listing of all the things a deacon ought to be, particularly in that first century church at Ephesus. And that passage is a fine one. It's, a, it's, it's good enough for exhorting deacons in the midst of ordination, but it's also been used too often to keep qualified men and women from serving as deacons simply on the basis of an over-literal interpretation. So this afternoon, Kenny, Jake, I, I want to charge you not with the words of Paul, you can look those up later if you want. But with the words of our Lord we've heard from Matthew 25. 
Because you see, the call to be a deacon is a call extended by both the church and by God. It's a call we confirm here today with laying on of hands. And it's above all else a call to service. While there are some congregations and some traditions that place the office of deacon as that above an average church member, as if it's some title to hold, to have, as Baptists here at Williams, we understand the role of deacon to be one of self-emptying service. As you are ordained for the diaconate, Kenny and Jake, you are ordained into the intentional service of this congregation on behalf of this congregation. Of course, your ordination here today does not mean that the two of you have not been servants of this church before tonight. Kenny, your commitment to Christ, this church, and this community is evident not only in your role in teaching Sunday school, but by the ways that you seek to be a positive influence in the lives of people you meet every day. I've seen it as you've interacted with people just in, in ways outside of this church, outside of the regular rhythms of, of doing the things that might seem like church, whether it's checking out at Lowe's, whether it's standing at the, grocery, at the gas pump having a conversation with someone. People see it. They know. They see it in the ways that you, be, you try to be the best father you can to Samuel and Levi, an example that I often cite when I'm raising two boys myself and in the ways that you strive to be a good husband to Rhonda and a good friend to everyone who knows you. Jake, your commitment to our Lord, this church, and this community is not only evident in the ways that you volunteer with our children and youth, but in the ways that you genuinely care about other people. And you do it in, in, with this spirit of joy and fun that's almost infectious. The ways that you're quick to lend a hand without ever telling folks, but ever, without ever throwing in the, the temptation of negativity to complain about things, but to always do them, never seeking a reward. In fact, you're probably even a little uncomfortable right now, me saying your name. The innumerable ways both of you show the love of Christ in times and in situations that others would not. Both of you bear the fruit of dedicated Christ followers. And with that fruit bearing being evidenced in your personal lives, the lives of your family members, and in the lives of the rest of the folks who know you, I charge you as deacons tonight to continue in the faith that has been so evident in your lives thus far. Continue to bear fruit for God's kingdom as you serve Christ's church here at Williams. And always remember that you are called to serve Christ first. And in Christ's service, you will always be called to serve others. You will be called to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to welcome the stranger, to clothe the naked, to care and visit the sick and the prisoner. So with your ordination this afternoon, this church confirms what most of us have already known and witnessed for years. And tonight I charge you with the servant leadership of being called a deacon in the life of the First Baptist Church of Williams. Amen. Now in just a moment, folks are going to come lay hands on you. I should have set Germex out. I remember at my ordination, the pastor at Shades Crest Baptist Church, the church had just recently had a very ugly sort of episode, and the pastor said, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to lay hands on somebody. So we won't say it with such negativity tonight. It's a joyous thing. And before we do that, I want to offer a prayer of ordination and ask Jake and Kenny if you would to come and sit. I don't have names marked on the chairs, but whoever would like to sit in whichever chair. I'm going to offer a prayer of ordination for the two of you. And then after, our, after the prayer, you, the congregation, are free to come and lay hands on these two. Now, I know if you haven't been here when we've done this before, you may be wondering, what does that look like? Because in some places, it's everybody getting together and touching one another and standing until your legs get numb sort of thing. But what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you, would just come down, lay your hands on their shoulders, maybe whisper a prayer. You can do one at a time, both of them, however you feel comfortable. Or maybe offer them a word of encouragement. Just tell them you love them, tell them you're praying for them. But just come and offer them a word and a laying on of hands. Then find your way back to your seat. But before we do that, let us join together in offering a prayer 
of ordination to God, a prayer of thanksgiving for these two who come this afternoon. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we are thankful for Kenny. We are thankful for Jake. We are thankful for their willingness to serve you and their church. Thankful for their hearts that are open. For Lord, this is not a calling that comes with all the accoutrements of reward. But Lord, a calling that comes with a sacrificial act of service. So, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured out on them. Lord, that they will be made aware God, of needs in this church and community. And the ways, Lord, in which the gifts that you have given them line with those needs. That they may fully serve you in this church in the office of deacon. And, Lord, now as we come to lay our hands on these two to bestow upon them our blessing and your ordination. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be present, to be real, not only in this time, but in every moment hereafter, and made manifest in the service of these two, your deacons. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. The church is free to come now in the service of laying on of hands to our two new deacons.
this time I'm going to ask if Kenny and Jake would to, to get out of the comfortable chairs and <laughs> come stand up here on the, the altar or the chancel here. A little presentation. <clears throat> I'll have a lapel mic on. I forgot about that. Okay. Um, Kenny, this is a certificate. I don't know if it gets you a discount anywhere, <laughs> but maybe you put it somewhere hanging on your wall like I do with my baptism certificate. I have it folded in, in a special Bible. From time to time, I put it out and I look at it and remind me of what God has called me to do and who God has called me to be, the man that God has called you to be. So on behalf of this church, I present you with this certificate to remind you of your ordination. Yes, sir. And to say on behalf of this church, we look forward to your service as a deacon here. Jake, again, I don't think this one's printed with any different ink, so no, no discounts. But maybe, maybe like other things, you put it somewhere where it reminds you this day, the kind words said by these folks, the encouragement has been offered to you as we look forward together to serving Christ in his church as a deacon. Appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Y'all can... That's an, y'all won't have to stand in front of nobody anymore. <laughs> yeah, y'all can go sit there. <clears throat> Absolutely. As long as it's... Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Would you like a microphone? Yeah. I'm a transplant. I didn't grow up here. Um, but I don't know that I've ever felt the love of more people and acceptance that I have since I've been here. And that truly means a lot. And uh, I'm not perfect. Um, but I want all of you to know that it means a lot to me. I'm humble, scared to death. Because I don't, I don't like letting people down. Um, but most of all, when God tells you to do something, you do it, and you hope that you measure up. Um, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity to, to serve you all. I love you all. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 no, in all seriousness, it's an honor to really have the opportunity to come up. I've grown up in this church. All of y'all have an integral part in my upbringing, and I appreciate it. I'm going to try my best to serve you the best I can. Thank you. Amen. Well, I hope it is no um, surprise to any of you that these two have been called, ordained, and to echo what Kenny said about being scared, humbled. I think there, if you were anything else, you probably shouldn't be here tonight. And so we're grateful for the service you two have brought. And we look forward to how Christ will use you here in this church. So as we have our benediction, let us all stand. <clears throat> we have celebrated the ordination of two tonight, but God calls us all, each and every one, to the work of Christ's church. So I pray the Holy Spirit moves in your heart. Maybe one day, if you haven't been in this place already, you will be in the near future. As you listen to the voice of God, not only moves in your heart through the words and actions of those around you in this church and in this community. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, tonight we are again thankful for these two who have come. Thankful for their willingness to serve. Thankful for this church that's called them to serve. As we go out from this place, as we seek your face and our, your way in this world, we pray you go with us. Walking with these we've ordained, and with each and every one of us, as even they walk alongside us in this journey. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.